Good evening. This is a Thursday, April 2nd, and I come to you with uh, words of hope, words of encouragement. One of my favorite songs, we sing it here at River Church all the time, that has a line in it. It goes like this. The, the, the lyric, it says, let us become more aware of your presence. It's a prayer to the Lord. We want to see you, uh, your, your, your presence, your power among us. I, I love that passage. I love that, 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 that prayer uh, because I really do believe that, that the power and the presence uh, of the Holy Spirit is, is all around us and working in us and enveloping us, and we, often, and we often miss it. So I pray that all the time, that I would like really see what's going on that I wouldn't just see the surface stuff that's going on in my life, but I would see a little, a little more deeply. I would see into the spiritual realm. But I've been contemplating lately, is, is that a legit prayer? I mean, is that hold water theologically? Should I be praying that? And so I, I want to take to you a couple places in Scripture because I want you to begin praying that same prayer, that the Lord would, that the Lord would peel, peel back the veneer of reality and that you could see a little deeper into this spiritual life, like what's really going on, rather than just a surface level sort of a uh, of an approach to life. And so, listen to this: It's Ephesians chapter six. We haven't gotten there yet in our in our preaching series at River Church, but we're going to get there. It says this: uh, Ephesians six verse uh, ten says, "Finally, be strong in the Lord in the strength of His might, to put on the whole whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand." against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, um, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in, in, he in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand evil. Okay, what is this passage saying? It it's saying dear friends, that, that you have an enemy, but he's not who you think he is. We, we have people in this world that we believe are our enemies. We designate them as our enemies, and we, we learn to hate them and to blame them. Perhaps you go to work, not these days, but perhaps you go to work, and you, you, you think your, your, uh, your boss is evil, and he's doing you wrong. And, and that is your greatest struggle in life. Uh, perhaps you have a parent who you believe has, has withheld from you or has mistreated you and has scarred your life. Perhaps you believe that your spouse is, your, is holding you back. Um, perhaps you have some other, some other uh, real life enemy, someone that you've chosen to blame, someone that you have, you hate. Now, like, I don't discount the fact that you had, that, that, that there are people in your life that, that have mistreated you, uh, that have, that have abused you. Um, but this passage, the Bible says that, that you have, you have a much greater enemy, that, that, that Satan himself hates you. If you're a Christ follower, he hates your worship. And he hates your family. He hates everything that you stand for. And, and if it was up to him, he would, he would destroy you now. But the beautiful, tr the beautiful truth is, uh, there is not a moment that goes by in which God is not standing at bay, he, or standing, uh, holding uh, Satan himself at bay. Uh, there, there, every moment of, of every day, the Lord is on your side. And he is, he is protecting you. When you sleep at night, when you lay your head on the pillow, uh, the Lord's angels are guarding over you. L listen to this. It's earlier in Ephesians. Uh, it's, it's actually Ephesians chapter uh, 1. And he, has put, and he has put all things under Christ's feet and gave him as head over all things to the church. What's this saying? It's saying that, that, that God's power and his authority, it reigns and it rules and it, it holds the power of Satan at bay. It, it holds back the evil forces in your life. And God is doing that every minute of every day for you. Listen, I, I need to hear that because there are days where I think, you know, I'm fighting with Lydia and people are disappointing me. 
And I think that, that you know, my, my biggest struggles are my job and my, my human relations. And, and, and I, 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 in those days, I asked the Lord, give me spiritual eyes to see who my enemy really is. My, my wife's not my enemy. My kids aren't my enemy. Um, my, my friends, they're not my enemies. You know, in this day, maybe you'd say, uh, you know, I, you got stopped by a law enforcement officer and, 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 and they're, they're, they're just, they're holding you back. You want to go to the grocery store and you can't. Or maybe, maybe you're angry at the county judge because you can't, uh, you can't go golfing, you can't go fishing. My point is we, we think trivial thoughts and we decide that that, that is where our struggles lie, that, that they are our enemies uh, and, and that our greatest struggle in this world are, are earthly, fleshly, temporal sort of struggles. And what I invite you today is to go deeper. We have time to meditate on the Lord. And, and so I, I invite you today to ask him to, to give you eyes to see where your spiritual battle really lies. But ultimately what I want for you is not for you to, to uh, contemplate the, the spiritual struggle for very long, but where I want you to go, where I want you to land is, is that, that the, the power and the authority of Jesus Christ has been, has been spoken over your life. Uh, it, it reigns and rules in your heart, and, and therefore the, the, your enemy, Satan, he can't really harm you. He can't really take you out because you, you have the power and the authority of God working in your life, holding Satan at bay. So rest in that. I'll read to you from a passage, Psalm 91, um, a couple of nights ago at our prayer gathering, um, a dear friend uh, shared this with us, and now I, it's just been with me ever since. And it, Here's what it says. It says that those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust in Him, for He will rescue you from every trap, protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night nor the arrows that fly, the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just, just open your eyes. Going to verse 9, it says, If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home, for He will order His angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands. Amen. Amen. So my prayer for you, and I ask that, that that, you're, that, that you pray this for yourself, that, that God would give you spiritual eyes to see that you can lay down some of the hate and anger and animosity that you have toward people in this world and you would realize that they're not your enemy. Oh Lord, give us spiritual eyes to see where the battle really lies. Love you guys. Thanks for letting me into your home this evening. Listen, the gospel truth is better days are ahead. It's all gonna be okay.